Hello and welcome to my second webinar titled Working with an Art Gallery. I am Kathy Beekman and will be your host for the next 60 minutes. This webinar is a continuation of my first webinar titled How to Approach an Art Gallery. For those of you that missed this first webinar, you can go to YouTube and enter my name, Kathy Beekman. The webinar will be the first in the list to pop up. I'm able to speak to you today as an authority about working with an art gallery because I am the owner of Beekman Fine Art and Design, a business that incorporates a number of different creative activities. I am first and foremost a professional artist and presently make the bulk of my living by painting landscapes in pastel. I exhibit in a number of galleries and in the past have found myself acting as an art director of a gallery. I'm also an art career coach or creative entrepreneur advisor at MSU and as an art career coach I help build confidence in other artists while also giving them the proper tools that they need in order to reach their artistic goals. My business also incorporates my skills as a professional custom picture framer. I've been a professional framer since 1993. Not only do I frame other artists' artwork, but it is extremely cost-effective to also frame my own. Most recently, my book titled Prosper, a success book for artists, was published with Amazon, and within this book can be found more detailed information about the topic, which we will be dis discussing today. With this said, this webinar is based on my own practical experiences. So what will we be discussing today in regards to working with an art gallery? Many artists successfully approach a gallery and find themselves being represented as an in-house artist. The mistake that many of us then make is that we stop right there. As a professional artist, you should never find yourself sitting back and thinking, now I've made it. There's nothing left for me to do now but watch as others sell my work for me. Thinking this way is a grave mistake. Being a professional artist takes a lot of work. You should always be moving forward and finding new and exciting ways to grow your business. Thinking that, now I've made it, only means that your career as an artist is going to begin to stagnate. After a while, galleries and collectors alike are going to notice that your work isn't as dynamic as it could be, that you as an artist do not seem as engaged, and that quite simply put, you are going nowhere fast. You can see here on this page, there are a lot of topics that we'll be discussing today to help keep you always moving forward in your art career. And just a few more, a special exhibit, shipping, pricing, contracts, and showing appreciation. We'll also cover those today. Now let us enter the world of working with an art gallery. It is important to keep the gallery informed. Tell them the story behind your artwork and about you, the artist. This can be done in your artist statement, artist biography, and resume. Keep these as current as possible. If you are unable to update weekly or even monthly, then be sure to do so at least quarterly. You do not want to seem as though you are a stagnant artist. People want to know what you're up to, what new series you're working on, an award you recently won, which new gallery you're being represented by, and other art activities you've partaken in. They want to know the rest of your story. Why? Because it makes your art more valuable to them. Why? Because they are finding themselves making a connection to it because of your story. It is important to keep these items up to date, but most importantly, be sure that your gallery has access to them. Email the actual statement, the biography, and resume to the gallery so that they can post them to their website and pass them on to your collectors or fans of your artwork. However, emailing them is not enough. You need to keep these items updated on your website or any place else you might have them posted or distributed. Many collectors and galleries frequent places where these items will be present and at times will take a look especially galleries that you're in and galleries that are looking for new artists. You would not want them looking at an artist statement that is two years old and has nothing to do with your current artwork, nor would you want them to look at your resume only to find the last exhibit you participated in was three years ago. They will most certainly wonder why. Are you no longer a working artist? So, we as artists need to wear many hats. 
One of these hats is the actual creating artist and the other is the writer. If you feel that you're not a good writer, then ask someone that is to help you. Let's move on to presentation. Professional presentation is a must if you want to sell. I'm absolutely amazed at how many artists spend weeks, months, or years creating their art, but not much time, if any, reflecting on how it will be presented. As a juror for a number of art shows, I always take into account the presentation of the artwork, as it can make or break an artist from receiving an award. Shoddy framing, or a base that does not enhance the sculpture, a poor color choice, or fabric behind an item of jewelry can also lose sales. Use acid-free products when framing. This ensures that the life of the artwork will be long. Completed paintings. Do not present paintings to a gallery that are still wet. Yes, some artists do. <laughs> when framed wet, the paint will dry and stick to the frame for one thing. The frame will never come off again, or if it does, it will tear the paint away from its surface. Hung wet, and art patrons run the risk of brushing up against the paint, ruining not only the painting, but their clothes as well. When using glass, an anti-reflective glass is a must. Without it, how can the viewer see the artwork? I changed from a conservation clear glass, which is a glass that has glare, to an anti-reflective glass and watch my sales soar. It is more expensive to purchase, but you'll make more money in the long run. Make sure that your 3D art is soundly mounted to its base, meaning that the art itself is centered and leveled on your chosen base. Also be certain that the base is clean of any cement or glue. If using a pedestal, it should be an appropriate size, not too big and not too small. Colors for bases are, of course, a personal preference, but a general rule of thumb is to use a light color base for dark, dark sculptures and a dark base for light colored sculptures. The color of the base should ideally show off the sculpture and not draw attention away from it. One of the most important things next to creating unique and interesting art is how the art is presented. Presentation is a factor that is present in everything we partake in. I mean, if we think about whether it's buying a new home or dining at a restaurant, if your dinner was slapped onto the plate and the home you were looking at was dirty, would you feel comfortable about spending your money there? We, you would no doubt question your purchase or not purchase at all. Bit more about presentation. If you would like top dollar for your art, then you need to present your artwork in a way that enhances it as well as making a patron want to own it. After all, buying and owning art is a luxury. There have been too many occasions where I've gone into an art exhibit and witnessed art that was presented in a way that gave the impression that the artist had little respect for the work they were showing. So hopefully the fellow, this following guide will be helpful in showing you some of the ways in which best to present your art. So let's talk about works on canvas. The sides of the canvas should be finished off, meaning they should be painted. Paint them whether they will be framed or not. And you might ask, why would I go through the trouble of doing that? Because sometimes the collector does not want the canvas framed they'll ask for it to be unframed if it has already been framed. Or some of the sides of the canvas may show depending on the type of frame you choose. If framed, the frame should be deep enough to accommodate the entire canvas. So we don't want any of that canvas sticking out of the back. Works on masonite or similar board. Any type of work that is done on hardboard should really be framed. Because these types of materials are usually thin so it's best to add the support a frame can offer. Sometimes the board warps and you don't want a collector to see that. Also, a frame simply adds more substance. Works on paper. Paintings, drawings, collages, or any other medium on paper should then be mounted onto board or framed. Do not use any non-archival sprays or adhesives 
to mount the paper because this will ruin the paper over time. And very often I've seen the paper brown in the areas where the glues or adhesives, uh, the spray adhesives are heaviest. So stay away from those. When using frames, the four corners should be tight no scratches, no dents or dings on the frame surface, and if using a mat, the color should not lead the eye away from the artwork. It should not compete with the art, but rather become part of the overall package. Completed artwork. It is your job to make great art for the gallery, and it should be ready to sit on a pedestal or hang on a wall. No wet, sticky, or not quite set artwork. You should only ever give great art to a gallery. Never think of giving them anything you would not hang on your own walls or on the wall of a museum. If you are proud of what you have created, it will reflect in the finished product. If you are uninspired or trying to hurry, not truly caring if it turns out well or not, it will reflect in that final product. So. Deliver only your best pieces to the gallery. If you don't, you'll have a gallery telling others that you are one of those artists that are hot and cold. Sometimes you produce good art and sometimes you don't. Sooner or later, the gallery will get tired of receiving half good art and will stop receiving any art from you at all. You should have a good idea of just how long it takes you to complete one piece of artwork. This way, you can calculate how much time is needed to create X number of pieces. You can then let your gallery know when they can expect new artwork from you and how much, and they can inform a collector of how long a commission piece will take. Be organized. Factor in time. And when I'm talking about time, I'm talking about inspiration, buying materials, painting, your dry time, sculpting, kiln time, clay modeling, building the master mold, make and steaming out waxes, developing and filling the refactory molds and cold work, the finished casting, glazing, photography, coordinating with subcontractors, picture framing, and so on. So with this said, how far in advance do you plan, do you need to plan in order to deliver 10 new pieces of artwork to the gallery every four months? Know when it makes sense to save money. Say when picture framing your own photography and when it pays to have a professional do it for you. This goes for photographing your artwork too. Avoid paying for rush jobs. This makes you look unprofessional and you end up making less money per piece of art. On the flip side, perhaps a professional does a job better than you could have ever dreamed of doing yourself. This goes for casting, Photographing, framing, pedestal making, etc. If it translates to better sales, go for it. It's important to build relationships with your suppliers. Well, who are these suppliers? Your suppliers can be custom picture framers, printers, foundries, photographers, and the list goes on. When you find a good professional, stick with them. You both will form a relationship of understanding what each other's needs are as well as trust. You'll find that if you need a special favor, they will bend over backwards for you. You become good friends and your supplier, you will find, will have your back when you find yourself in a pinch. Suppliers, like a gallery, need your goods delivered to them in an organized and prompt fashion so that they can do their job to the best of their ability. It is important to deliver your goods to your supplier in a prompt and organized fashion. They will, in turn, understand that you're a professional and will carry out their, <coughs> excuse me, their job in a professional manner as well. Once you have a supplier you are happy with, know that they are good at what they do and know if something you are requesting will not work. So trust them and get out of their way. You hired them to do a job, so let them. Solicit their opinions. After all, you've hired them because they are the professional in their field. As a side note, knowing how to give clear direction and then letting the professionals do their job is an invaluable skill to have and some of us to learn. 
inventorying your artwork. Every professional artist needs to know where their artwork is located and be able to intelligently manage it. If your gallery contacts you and wants to know if you have another piece of artwork similar to XYZ, then you should be able to look the artwork up in your inventory database and respond to them with confidence. Now your next question is probably going to be, well, how do I inventory my artwork? This is easy to do. First, create a spreadsheet. If you know how to use Excel, terrific, or you can find someone to show you how to use it. If not, you can create one yourself with a paper, pencil, and ruler. You can also find programs to purchase or find easy-to-use online inventory and art business management platforms for artists such as Artwork Archive. There's a fee for this, but it's well worth it. So what to include on your spreadsheet? You want the name of the artwork, a short description or image, the size of the artwork, the medium, the year created, its price, location, for example, is it in your studio or in a gallery, and in a gallery, which gallery, and if the artwork is sold and for how much. This is pertinent information to include, but you may find that you want to go one step farther by including, for example, information about how many ceramic cups are in the set, if this is a series, and if so, which one, describing the base you attach the artwork to or how it was framed. So, how to know how to fill the space. Check with the gallery to see what sort of space you're expected to fill. Ask for the height and width of their wall dimensions, and don't be afraid to ask this sort of question. Asking a question like this only shows that you're a professional trying to do your best at satisfying the gallery's needs. Does the gallery have pedestals that will hold your work? Is the pedestal surface wide enough, and is the pedestal strong enough? Are the pedestals clean? What are their color? For example, a darkly colored pedestal is going to show off a crystal clear glass object much better than a white colored pedestal. Wall color is important too. If your 2D art that will be hung on a white colored wall is also white or very light, the artwork may very well become lost. Best to then mount the artwork on a darker backing or delineate the artwork with darker framing. Also, do you need stands for your artwork? Are the stands to become part of the artwork, or are they transparent so that they do not detract from the artwork and so disappear into the background? If your 2D artwork is heavy, a good question you will want to ask the gallery is if they have someone that can mount very heavy objects on their walls. Good lighting. Lighting is extremely important. If the artwork cannot be seen, it will be very difficult to sell it. Window lighting is best. Ceiling lighting is a must. If your artwork requires side or under lighting, you will need to discuss this with the gallery because you may need to require this special lighting in advance of bringing in your artwork, or you may need to provide it yourself. Moral of the story, practice hanging, presentation, and lighting in your studio space. This way you'll know specs for lighting, if you will be in need of special background colors, or if you're going to need a 360 degree view and then you can discuss this all with the gallery. Lastly, how many pieces of artwork will you need in order to comfortably fill the space? If you are unable to view the space in person prior to delivery of the artwork to the gallery, then call them and again ask for dimensions and it never hurts to ask for photos. A special exhibit. It is perfectly acceptable to ask if you can have a special exhibit in a gallery that you are already represented by. After all, your relationship with this gallery is a business one. You both want sales, and a special exhibit, meaning a one-person show, might be just the thing to help you gain more recognition as a professional artist as well as seeing an increase in those sales. If you are granted a special showing of your artwork where you get to fill a room or rooms at the gallery or the whole gallery itself, this is an opportunity that you will want to announce. You will want to of course announce it on your website as well as social media 
and perhaps a special e-write, but you will also want to send a physical postcard out to friends, family, collectors, and potential collectors. Discuss with the gallery who will be responsible for mailings and the costs involved. This may very well be in your contract, so look there first before asking. What should be present on the postcard? A high quality image or images of your artwork. If you have an image of your artwork, the dates the show will run, the day of the reception, if there is one, the time of the reception where the show will take place, and that you are the artist that will be present. You could word this, for example, meet the artist at the reception from 5 to 8 o'clock. Lastly, do not forget to mention the title of your exhibit. Present the printer and gallery with professionally taken photographs of your artwork. Without these, you run the risk of misrepresenting your artwork, or in other words, inadequately conveying the visual components of your art. Nowadays, the images should be presented in a digital format. If you are unable to take professional digital imagery, then pay for a professional to do this for you. When should images of artwork be completed? At least six weeks in advance of your exhibit. This is so the gallery has time to advertise your show, place the images on their website, and send in photos of your artwork to appropriate media persons. A special exhibit of your artwork at a gallery representing you as an in-house artist is not the time to recycle work that has already shown at this gallery or even in the area of the gallery. This is a time to celebrate your creativity with a spotlight on a new series new subject matter, or a new direction that your creativity is taking you. People that frequent the gallery or follow you as an artist are waiting for you to surprise and delight them. When does the artwork need to be delivered? Usually a gallery wants a day or two to inventory and then hang all of your artwork before the show opens. But with this said, be prepared to de deliver your artwork at a minimum of three days before the exhibit opens. At times, I've personally been asked to deliver a month out in advance. Word of advice, nail down that delivery date well in advance so that you can plan ahead. When packaging to deliver, package each item as though it is going to be dropped, sat on, or thrown. Take every precaution to ensure that your artwork arrives at the gallery in the condition it left your studio space. You want every opportunity to show and sell each piece that you have so carefully created. There is nothing worse than to have carefully worked on a piece of art only to have it turned away from an exhibit because it's been damaged during the delivery. Let's move on to shipping. Sometimes it is not practical for you to deliver your art to the gallery in person. So you need to pay for shipping of your artwork. First of all, it should state in your contract just who is responsible for the shipping to and from the gallery. Sometimes the gallery is willing to pay for both and sometimes just the return of unsold works. With this said, check with the gallery to see what their shipping practices are. Perhaps you have special instructions for the shipment of your artwork or just a particular piece. After all, if the artwork does not sell, you would like to have the opportunity to sell it elsewhere. And if it is not packaged properly for its return to you, and therefore breaks, the opportunity for that sale is lost. If you're doing the shipping, then find out in advance what the boxes will cost and how much time it will take for them to box, say, 15 pieces, and how long it will take for them to get to the gallery. It is also a good idea to have your boxes labeled in some way. For example, box one of 15. You should also have inventory sheets of what is in the box one of 15. And then one inventory sheet will go to the gallery and one for yourself to be used in the future as reference. And these shipping methods are used when you yourself cannot take the work directly to the gallery. It does cost good money to ship your work appropriately, but the investment is worth it in the long run in making sure that your art arrives safely. And always, always ensure your artwork. If you're able to deliver in person, measure your vehicle. Is it large enough to deliver your artwork to the gallery? 
Will the vehicle hold all 16 by 20 package paintings or fit the six foot by two foot by three foot sculpture? If not, prepare in advance to borrow or rent an appropriate vehicle. Pricing. Most artists have a question about pricing at some point in their career and usually it's early on. We discussed pricing a bit in the first webinar titled How to Approach an Art Gallery and now I'm going to discuss it just a bit more here. You and the gallery are a good match and they're now representing you, so raw yay. You've been with them a while and they're selling your artwork. It is perfectly all right to discuss raising your prices with them. But when it comes down to it, trust the gallery when you should or should not raise them. If you do raise your pricing, keep in mind that pricing should remain the same across the board. This means that artwork in all galleries, art exhibits, your studio, and even at art festivals have the same pricing per size or piece. In other words, similar works of art should have similar selling points. Keep in mind that this is based on unique characteristics of your art in combination with outside art market influences. So rule of thumb, be clear and consistent in pricing your art because this will give you credibility as a professional artist. The contract. Review your contract annually. Both you, the artist, and the gallery should review, sign, and date. Pay particular attention to insurance coverage, commission split, if discounts are given, and when you can expect a check after a sale. And who is responsible for what when it, be, when it comes down to paying for advertising and shipping. Once you're both in agreement, then both of you will sign and date the contract. Make sure that you each have a new copy of the signed agreement. Showing appreciation. Are you happily working with your gallery or are you unhappy? If you're happy with your gallery and they are working hard for you, you should thank them. If you're not happy with them, then it is time to find another gallery to represent you. There are many ways to thank a gallery. A nice thank you card for letting you have a one-person exhibit, a quick text message for the great sale, a nicely written email thanking the gallery for picking up a large body of artwork from your studio, or you can send a gift of general appreciation. Actually receiving a phone call from you is one of the best ways to say thank you when you're unable to do it in person. It is important for the gallery to know that you are happy and why. This can only please them and want to try even harder for you. I have a few more general words of wisdom. Save all of your correspondences that you have with the gallery. Having a file folder on your computer that you can quickly reference should, be the, should there be what you think is an error on the gallery's part or the gallery on your part may be easily rectified by finding the correspondence that speaks to the situation at hand. If you can't remember when you were to deliver new artwork, who is to pay for the postcards or what the address of the collector is so you can ship the commissioned artwork directly to them. All of this information may very well be in the correspondences you have had with the gallery. Look here before you get bent out of shape over a misunderstanding or call the gallery for information that they've already given to you. Refer clients to the gallery. This shows that you're willing to work with the gallery and that you're proud to be represented by them. Going to the openings, especially if they are yours, openings have many benefits. They are highly sociable and incredibly important networking events. The gallery staff get to know you, which is very important in being able to sell your artwork to the public. And collectors get to know you and ask you questions about you as an artist and your artwork. Again, you're helping create that story. The one question you do not want them to ask is, where's the artist? And be patient. Some collectors do not buy right away. They want more of a story and so will purchase once they have become more attached to you and your artwork. Finally, the one thing that all successful gallery artists have in common 
is that they do not give up. If their sales are not soaring, they find a way to make them soar. If they're not happy with the gallery that is representing them, they find a way to fix the problem. If they make a mistake, they admit to it and they move on. If they fail at making a deadline, they apologize and they promise to do better next time. Not giving up means these successful artists aim high. They won't be beaten. They take responsibility for failure. They learn from it and start all over from a stronger position. If you want to be a successful gallery artist, then continue to pursue this dream and never, ever give up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope that you found this webinar useful. If so, you will also find my book, Prosper, a success book for artists, invaluable. It consists of 12 chapters packed with tips and real life experiences geared toward the beginning and established artists alike. And you can purchase my book on Amazon. As an MSU Create Advisor, I am also available for private advising. You can contact us through our MSU Creates website to begin our program today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure being invited to facilitate this webinar and speaking to you on this topic. Thank you.